Hello and welcome to this edition of Hack Naked TV for October 23rd, 2015. I'm your host, Bo Bullock, and today we're going to talk about attacking NTP. We're also going to talk a little bit about defeating the chip and pin system, as well as uh, a little bit about hack and tea kettles. As always, Hack Naked TV is brought to you by Black Hills Information Security, the leaders of penetration testing and active defense. Contact consulting at blackhillsinfosec.com. And by Cybery.it. Get the latest hacking and security training for free from www.cybery.it. You can use our uh, special referral link at the bottom. It's http colon slash slash hacknaked.tv forward slash Cybery. All right, let's talk about attacking NTP a little bit. Um, so NTP, Network Time Protocol, uh, some researchers found some, uh, uh, some new vulnerabilities that exploits a logic error in NTPD's handling of certain crypto NAC packets. So essentially, if an attacker were to send a, a certain crafted crypto NAC packet to NTP, it could cause an NTP server to peer with the attacker. Uh, what's bad about this is that it would enable the attacker to modify the system clock on the device. So why would it be bad to have your system think that it's 1986 or whatever? Um, well, all right. So it, there's a few vulnerabilities. Uh, you know, some of the primary ones are denial of service vulnerabilities, some authentication attacks. So, for example, you might be able to uh, to, to trick a system into thinking that a previously expired password is still valid for a user. Um, but I think the most interesting one that's been kind of pointed out is uh, some new attacks against TLS via modifying a system's clock. Um, so how would you, how would you perform attack against an HTTPS website, um, just by modifying a system's clock? So let's start with, uh, the idea that possibly your server was vulnerable to Heartbleed before. And let's say somebody stole your server's private key for your server. Um, well, what an attacker could te technically do then is take that cert, man in the middle of connection to, let's say google.com. Um, let's say that one of their servers was vulnerable to Heartbleed and an attacker were able to get were able to obtain one of their certs. They could then host that cert on a man in the middle system, um, change the clock time uh, to a time where that cert was previously valid, uh, let's say four or five years ago. Um, the client, most, most client browsers will accept a cert as long as the client time thinks that it's the right date. Um, so even though Google may have completely invalidated that cert, uh, it's still possible that uh, an attacker could man in the middle connection to google.com via an attack where they're uh, providing a, an invalid cert and modifying a, a time, the, the actual clock on the, on the client system. So uh, from, from an uh, NTP server perspective, how do you, how do you fix this? Install uh, NTP-4.2.8p4 to help fix that vulnerability. Chip and pin uh, credit cards. Let's talk about man in the middle the chip and pin system. This is kind of a cool story. So in 2011, um, a number of credit cards were stolen from, uh, the U from a place in the UK. Uh, these cards were then able to be used at particular retail stores uh, without having um, the, the proper owner's pin. So how, how is it that an attacker was able to steal a chip and pin system that should require the pin of the original owner to actually... Um, to, to, to purchase something from a store. Um, well, so finally, four years later, some forensic analysis was released from uh, some French researchers on this specific thing, on how they actually were able to uh, man in the middle of this connection. So what, what essentially they were doing is, is they, ins they literally glued a chip called a fun card. It's a hobbyist little chip directly onto the card itself, uh, directly onto the actual chip. Um, so the way the way this would work is uh, an attacker would you know stick the card in the the actual valid card on the chip or the actual valid chip would uh, would provide the card authentication to uh, the card reader. Card reader would say, okay, if you're really you, provide your pin. At this point, the attacker could enter any pin they want. The fun chip is man in the middling that connection and saying. Um, it, it, it actually would, would, would send a signal stating that the user entered a valid pin. So they were able to literally man in the middle of that connection between the card and the card reader and say, hey, here's a valid pin, here's a valid card, give me what I want. I um, thought it was kind of an interesting, interesting story. Uh, allegedly, they stole $680,000 worth of material this way. Um, you know, as we in the U.S. start to try to move more and more towards ship and pin systems, um, we're going to see more and more attacks just like this. So uh, let's talk about Google and some, some announcements they've made for Android moving forward. Uh, they released a, a doc uh, that basically defines that any Android device moving forward, starting with Android 6.0, have to have encryption 
enabled on, on the device themselves by default. So all manufacturers that are building phones for Android 6.0 have to install full disk encryption by default. It's really cool, you know, because like encrypt all the things, right? Um, so what's cool about this too is that in the doc, they specify that the encryption key must remain on the device itself. So Google or the FBI or anyone are not going to be able to decrypt the phone without the, the user's passcode. Um, so another story that's kind of interesting too is, is Apple similarly was were asked recently by a, a federal judge to unlock a device for a case uh, for law enforcement. And they basically came back and said, it's impossible. We can't do it. So we're going to see you know more and more, I think, in the future where every, every mobile device is going to be basically locked and unable to be accessed whatsoever, um, unless you have obviously the, the passcode to unlock it. Kind of neat. Okay, this is kind of a fun story. Um, so some security researchers in the UK, uh, we're doing some, some testing on some Internet of Things devices, specifically the uh, iKettle. Uh, from uh, uh, it's basically a, uh, a a tea kettle that boils some water for you. Um, it's uh, a smart device that would attach to your home Wi-Fi network. Um, has its own Android app as well as an iOS app that allows you to uh, you know go ahead and boil some water whenever you want. Um, so what what these researchers found about this particular device is that. Uh, they, they found an interesting attack where they could get the device to spit out your wireless pre-shared key in clear text. So how the attack would work is essentially you would de-auth the device from the network it was already connected to. Um, you would get it to connect to an AP that you've specified that has the same SSID. It's a very common attack that we use all the time. Um, and uh, after you've gotten the device to connect to your network, they, they, were, they found that um, the Android device was connecting to it uh, via Telnet on the local network. Um, that's how it was providing commands to the device um, to, you know, boil water, whatever. Um, <clears throat> they found that uh, the, the, the Telnet port had a default pass of 123456. So here's another interesting part about this particular uh, Internet of Things device. Um, the, the default password does not change if you uh, configure it with an Android device. If you use an iOS device, it does change, but it only allows you to put a six character pin in. So still brute forceable. Um, anyway, so you can connect it over Telnet, provide two commands after you've connected it to it over Telnet, and the iKettle will spit out your uh, wireless pre-shared key in clear text. Kind of cool. Um, anyways, you know, we see all these Internet of Things devices launching, and nobody is paying attention to security when they, when they actually uh, put them out. So uh, we need to start uh, looking more and more towards securing our tea kettles. That's it for this edition of Hack Naked TV. Uh, if you want to check out more Hack Naked TV, check out hacknaked.tv. Uh, check out Security Weekly at wiki.securityweekly.com. Um, and uh, you can email us at the show at hacknaked.tv. And I'm on Twitter at DaftTac. Have a great weekend. Talk to you later.